Hey guys, Moidog here, and today we've got another brand new update for Squad, Squad V 2.16. Although we don't have the Marines just yet, this update brings a whole bunch of new vehicles, a new weapon emplacement, a huge game mode change to seating, and more. And if you guys are keeping count, this is actually now the fourth content update for Squad this year, which first shows me that the dev team was serious when they said that they wanted more frequent patch updates earlier this year, but also that we might just be on pace for something like the Marines or Pan-Asia before the year ends. I don't know, I'm trying to look at the roadmap to see if we have any hints, but let's be honest, the roadmap has been out of date for a while now, but this is a very, very good sign. But enough of what could be releasing, let's talk about what is actually releasing, and we're starting it off with the Hell Cannon. Yes, this thing is finally here. After about a year of the devs teasing it and saying, yes, it's coming, we promise the insurgents will get it, we finally have it. And it is awesome. At first look, this thing doesn't seem to be anything other than a simple mortar tube. But as you can see right next to it, there's an enormous homemade propane tank explosive that your player lugs up and places on top of the tube before firing. Now, I've said for the longest time that Squad has some of, if not the best audio in the tactical shooter space, and this Hell Cannon does not disappoint. It has about a 20 second flight time, and when it hits the ground, it feels like a piece of command strike artillery just went off. Which makes sense because when you actually look at it, it's 140 millimeter high explosives. The Hell Cannon is only 250 build, but each round costs 150 ammo. And with only one per fob, I think that's a pretty good balance. And with the range of just over 900 meters, insurgents will now be able to really rain down hell on enemies from a safe and fortified position. I really see this as being something that will actually help differentiate insurgents a bit from conventional factions. And while the US or Russia might be able to call in a precision airstrike to knock out a HAB, we might start to see some sneaky insurgent hell cannon fobs, finding HABs and big emplacements, and then just using the hell cannon to delete everything when possible. It's an amazing weapon and I cannot wait to start using it in real games. Before we get into the rest of the video, please sit back and enjoy some Hell Cannon ASMR. Additionally, although it is a minor change, insurgents will also have a new primary weapon if they choose the sapper kit. Now, all sappers have the PPSH instead of the Mosin carbine, and I absolutely love this change. The Mosin isn't a bad rifle, not by any means, but the carbine variant is at minimum a two-shot kill. And since most of what the sapper does is get up close and personal to drop mines and explosives, it really makes the kit feel clunky, and I always feel like I'm going to die if I ever have someone jump up on me. With the PPSH, you'll have some decent mid-range and excellent close quarters firepower, allowing you to burst through defenses and drop your IEDs. And let's be honest, it's just really cool to use the PPSH. Now, Insurgents aren't the only ones getting new content. In V2.16, the Canadians are getting a bunch of brand new vehicles to help finally differentiate themselves a bit from the US. First off is the M113A3 APC, a transport vehicle that will fill a similar role as the British Bulldog, which, to be honest, I think is one of the best vehicles in the game. The M113 might look familiar if you've ever played games like Battlefield Vietnam since it was an American staple for years, and modernized variants have actually been used by the Canadians in Afghanistan. In-game, the M113 absolutely flies, and with three variants including the C6 machine gun and 50 cal open top, as well as the enclosed crows, I really hope players embrace using this thing with infantry. It has plenty of ammo, you can swap your kits, you can fit an entire squad inside, and you can quickly transport from point to point. Squad is a walking simulator, and this is a great way to reduce that walking if you're on the Canadian team, especially now that you know you're going to be protected by the armor instead of just a weak transport vehicle. Speaking of weak transport vehicles, in addition to the APC, the Canadians are also now getting Jeeps. The Light Utility Vehicle Wield, or LUVW, is lightly armored and comes in a Transport, Logi, C6 Machine Gun, and 50 cal variant. Although it won't protect you as much as the Tap V or the Mat V, 
it should give you a bit more protection against some small arms when compared to things like the Insurgent Techies. Now, a Jeep isn't new to Squad, and the MEA actually also have a Jeep, the Samir Jeep, and what I love about them is that these tiny Lodgies allow you to quickly and secretly get Lodgy or radios in places where you might not expect it. Giving Canada this option is fantastic, and if I'm being honest, I really think we need more of these unarmored or lightly armored transport vehicles in Squad. They just really make infantry combat much more dynamic when you're able to have troops dismount and move around quickly, and it's just a lot more fun that way. Finally, the Canadians are also going to be getting a brand new helicopter, the CH-178. It's not really what I expected, and no, this isn't a Russian hip. Well, okay, so it kind of is. It's actually a really weird piece of Canadian history where they actually leased out a number of MI-17s during Afghanistan as the military tried to find a better option for the medium-lift helicopter space. Now, this vehicle won't be on every layer, but you can see it on a couple maps and layers set in Afghanistan, like Lashkar Valley. And if I'm being honest, it's pretty much a reskin. But it does give Canada the ability to have a lot more build and ammo, meaning that the U.S. is now the only ones left with the tiny, tiny Blackhawk as their only helicopter option. It's a cool, unique piece of history, and it actually happened, so I think it's awesome. More variety and more vehicles in-game is always a good thing. Now, not only do we have these new vehicles, but Squad has also finally implemented a full-on seating mode. During the last couple updates, we've had some really nice quality of life changes implemented for Squad seating. If you're not sure what seating is, it's when players join a server that is empty and play around on a small map with one or two objectives in order to start filling it up to full capacity until they can swap to a full game. We've had a few seating maps implemented in the past, but this is a completely overhauled mode. Squad seating will now have pre-placed forward fobs and habs with 10,000 ammo and 2,000 build. All emplacements have been removed from the lair, except for Sumari and Talil, which actually has a lair that allows insurgents to have the hell cannon, which honestly is just a hilarious meme in itself. But kits are unlimited, there's no ticket lost, and there are restriction zones to prevent enemy players from camping spawns. As a server owner and someone who's managed countless seeds over the years, these are awesome changes that finally allow admins to be a little hands-off when it comes to getting servers up and running. What's even great is that the seeding mode will transition to a live mode, removing restrictions and adding in ticket penalties again whenever a player threshold is met. And that player threshold can actually be configured by the admins. So let's say on your server, you want it to be live at 30 on 30. Seating will then be officially finished when you hit 60 players and boom, the mode just turns to live game and you're good to go. I'm sure there will be some issues and growing pains with this thing, but this is an awesome change and I'm just really happy that the dev team has addressed the pain of seating. So thank you guys, seriously, and sincerely from each and every one of us who have ever had to run a seed. There are also a few more gameplay changes, including a brand new smoke grenade model for Canada, the L83A1, but the only really big thing that jumps out to me for the rest of these patch notes is that FOB radios will now be 20 tickets. This is a huge change, and the devs have stated in the patch notes that the design intention is to increase the incentive to defend FOBs and try to address FOB spam which is currently the predominant tactic for winning games. We've all had those games where one player on either your team or the enemy team grabs a squad mate, a Lodgy, and literally just drives around objectives, dropping fob after fob after fob, and it is so exhausting to play against. It turns the game into whack-a-mole more than a game of squad, and now losing a fob is actually going to be more expensive than losing a tank. I'm sure there will still be people who try to do the whack-a-mole meta, but with capture point scaling encouraging players to have full squads back cap since it's twice as fast as one person cap in the point, and these 20 ticket radios, I think squad is going to be a little bit more slower paced, people are going to be smart with their fobs, and this should prevent the fob spam as well as chaotic rushes into the middle points. I'm sure it will still happen, but I think players are going to be a little bit more cognizant of what's going on, and 20 tickets for a radio is a really big change but I do think it's going to be a good thing. I will also say that Sappers and Kaba Engineers, you guys are probably going to be pumping your fists at this since you're now going to be MVPs if you just knock out a few fobs. Overall, I really like the direction that Squad is going and I cannot wait to see how these gameplay changes affect the real games. But what do you guys think? Is the Hell Cannon worth the wait? Are the Canadian VIX game changers at all? And will the new radio ticket cost be a positive or negative thing for the game? Let me know in the comments below, and if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. But 
That's it for me. Until next time, peace.